Hello, Daz here of American Civil War and UK History and on behalf of Emerging Civil War I'm here at a cemetery in North London, England and I was lucky enough to be invited to a dedication ceremony of a British Civil War veteran by the name of George W. Denham. Now he is having a headstone unveiled. Here is a short story of George's life. The story of George William Denham. George William Denham was born on April 23rd, 1835 in Grantham, Lincolnshire. He then moved to Clapham in London in 1843. And then in 1856, he decided to move to America and ended up in New York City. He arrives during one of the coldest winters ever known. And with nowhere to stay or go and with no money, he enrolled into the US Navy in Brooklyn at the Brooklyn Naval Yard. He would first go on a receiving ship and from there go on to join the crew of the USS St. Lawrence. He would enlist as an ordinary seaman. His time on the seas would see himself and the USS St. Lawrence travel the Atlantic coast of South America and the West Indies. Records show he served three years as a seaman on the USS St. Lawrence, but on May 31st, 1859, he was discharged and the USS St. Lawrence was decommissioned. George goes off the map for a few years, but appears again in Norristown, Pennsylvania. And on August 26, 1863, he enlists into the Union Army at the age of 28. He joined as a substitute and he receives $200, but he used a different name. He enlists as William Wright Denham. And the man he replaced was a master butcher and a farmer. Four days later, enlisting, he joins the ranks of the Company F of the 111th Pennsylvania Volunteers. On September 24th, 1863, he joins troops at Raccoon Ford, Virginia, which is under the command of Joseph Hooker. And on the same day, the 111th Pennsylvania were ordered west to Nashville, Tennessee. They then end up and find themselves in Wauhatchie, where they were set upon by Confederate force. George and the 111th Pennsylvania, who at this point were tasked with guarding the recently opened cracker line to Bridgeport. George and the 111th Pennsylvania then find themselves involved in a battle above the clouds, also known as Lookout Mountain, which formed part of the Battle of Chattanooga. After this, the 111th stay in and around Lookout Mountain as pickets. Fast forward a few months and George rejoins the US Navy at Cairo, Illinois in May of 1864. He joins the crew of the USS Choctaw for the rest of the war. He would then be present in Molo, Alabama when the magazine blows up. This happens on May 25th of 1865. He goes ashore to help fight the fire and to rescue any survivors. It's after this event when doctors discharged George from the Navy, finding he was suffering with what we now call post-traumatic stress disorder. In 1870, he returned to London, England, where he settled down in North London area of St Pancras. He marries a lady by the name of Jane Holscombe. He joins the US Civil War Veterans London branch and was their eighth member. Then in 1899, he applied for a veteran's pension, but because he had enlisted as William Wright Denham, they couldn't find his enlistment. George never gave up, and for 14 years, he persisted. And finally, in 1913, the US of Interior Bureau awarded him his pension at the rate of $30 a month. But unfortunately, he then dies on the 19th of January, 1914, and was buried in Islington and St Pancras Cemetery, London, England, but without a federal headstone. And that's where it brings us today, July 30th, 2021. 
I hope you enjoyed George's story. Thank you. Now, before we move on to the ceremony, I would like to mention the work that Gina and her mother, Barbara, put into clearing the area where George was buried. As you can see, it was all overgrown and had to be cleared. Um, this was after many years of neglect and what a great job the end result is. So I will just show you. So firstly, this is what it looked like when they turned up. They obviously, they couldn't find the plot. They had to go back to the cemetery manager, the manager and the, the people there. They, they found the spot in the end. And this is what it was like. It was all overgrown. So again, this is where George is. And eventually they cleared the spot. And to mark it, they used a, a little piece of wood um, and they put a hat there to mark the spot. And then eventually they got round to actually marking it and doing it all properly. And you will get to see the end result of what it looks like at the end of the ceremony. But that was uh, what happened. So I'm joined by George Denham's great great granddaughter, and so um, tell us a little bit about how you found out about George, and obviously, you know what it meant to you to be able to dedicate, you know, your great great granddaughter. Um, well, I found out about him when I was a young child. My mum had told me about her grandfather, sorry, her, her, her great grandfather, who apparently served in the American Civil War got a pension from the American government to the day he died. Well, that was about as much as we knew. 
moving forward, 2005, I paid a, histor a researcher in America which confirmed the story and leading to where we are today, um, to confirming that, yeah, he served in the 111th Pennsylvania Volunteers, he was in the US Navy, and um, you know, served on the USS Choctaw. But to find that he had an unmarked grave for all that service, 10 years of his life in America, it, it broke my heart. And so moving forward to dedicate 107 years later his service with that headstone and to have so many different people involved in it, in the American Civil War Round Table, the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War, living, uh, living historians, uh, 20 family members, absolutely a joyous moment and I feel as though the unfinished business is probably finished business now. So yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I just want to take a minute to reflect on today's dedication ceremony and how honoured and privileged it was not only to be invited but to have the chance to attend a real American Civil War veterans dedication not only that a British veteran and what always grabbed me about George's story is the human interest story which most of us can relate to yes the stories of the generals and the officers is cool but you can't beat the real man's stories of the Civil War. Before I end the video, I just have a few thanks to make. Firstly, Gina, George's great, great granddaughter, for who without you and your hard work and dedication over the years, we wouldn't have been here today. To the Southern Skirmish Association and ACWS, the uh, two reenactment societies here in the UK for attending in uniform, which was brilliant. The American Civil War Roundtable UK member who did an amazing speech, Greg. The Union Sons of Veterans, Ensign John Davis Camp Number 10 London, who also attended and also gave a great speech. Cody C. Endell for the piece of music you heard over the photo montage. Thank you so much for letting me use that piece of music. The photographer Gaz, for letting me use all of your great photographs. A massive thank you to Chris Mikowski and Emerging Civil War for letting me share this with the Emerging Civil War universe. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, history and the Civil War is so important. And we should never forget the history 